Welcome back to Peas. Today we're going to be working on linear relationships and our goal today, hopefully by the end of this, you can say I can graph linear relationships by hand using a table or from the equation. So taking a look at graphing linear relationships by hand, uh, if you have the slope of a line and a point on it, you can graph the whole line by remembering rise and run. And of course, rise and run is all about the slope. So let's have a look at example number one, and we'll learn this through steps during this example. Example number one says, a line with a slope of five passes through the point negative three, negative two. Graph the line. Well, I've got a set of steps here. Let's follow them. First step says, plot the point. Well, that's easy enough. Uh, negative three, negative two. I need to go back three, one, two, three, and down one, two. And there's my point negative 3, negative 2. Let's see what step 2 tells us to do. Step 2 says take the slope and break it into rise and run. Well, it says I have a slope of 5, which is just one number, and for rise and run I need two numbers. But if you remember that for any whole number, we can write that with a denominator of 1. Because 5 divided by 1 is just 5, so I haven't changed anything by giving it that denominator of 1. So now we actually do have a rise and a run. Okay, so step 2, check. Step 3. Step 3 says use the rise and run to move away from the point you plotted and plot another point. So, the point I plotted, I have to move away from it using rise and run. So I have to rise 5 and run 1. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up from the point I plotted and 1 forward. Always run forward so you don't trip over everything. You don't want to run backwards. Um, okay, I've got another point. Looking good so far. Step 4. Step four says, repeat step three for as many times as you like, then draw a line through your points. Okay, so I'm going to go from this point that I just plotted. I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, five, and forward one. So I've got to rise five, run one, and I think that's all I really want to do because I'm out of space. So now it says, then draw a line through the points. So I'll draw my line. And there it is. Looks like a nice line too, and that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, so let's take a look if we're given an equation. Remember that when you have an equation, you have the slope and the y-intercept. The y-intercept is just a point. It's a special point because it's on the y-axis, but it's still just a point. So if we have the equation of a line, we have enough information to graph it because of the steps we just followed. So using the same steps, here's what we're going to do. We are going to graph the line y equals negative 4x plus 2. So we're going to identify first the slope and the y-intercept. Now, the slope is 4 fifths, and it's negative 4 fifths. And notice my little point here. If the slope is negative, put it with the rise. Again, we don't ever want to run backwards. You're going to trip over yourself. And the y-intercept is 2. So we want the rise to be negative 4 and the run is 2 because we got rise over run for slope. So let's follow the steps and you can look on the page uh, before this for the steps. The first step said we want to plot our point. Well, our point here is the y-intercept and the y-intercept is the point 0, 2 because it's right on the y-axis. So I'm going to go to the y-axis at 2 and put my big blue dot. Now I have to use the slope to rise and run away from that point. So I'm not going to rise at all because the rise is negative which means I'm going down. So I go down 4 and then forward 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, down. One, two, three, four, five, forward, and I'm going to put my big blue dot. Now I can do that as many times as I want. 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. And again, I think that's all I want to do because I'm out of room. So now I'm going to draw my line. Now notice that my pattern could carry on backwards. If I went backwards and up from the y-intercept, that is that I do run backwards, but I make sure I go up. You can only have one negative direction. You can go backwards and up or forwards and down. You can't go backwards and down because if you go backwards and down, you end up with a positive slope because two negative directions make a positive slope. So we could have gone backwards, one, two, three, four, five, and made our run negative, and then rows four, one, two, three, four. And we would get another point on that line, but it's much easier if you think of the run as always being positive and the rise is whether you're either going up or down, but you're always moving forward. So let's have a look at some more interesting examples. There's a few different ones here. Um, what's interesting about part A when I'm graphing these lines is that for part A, uh, I've got them switched around on you. You got to make sure you know which is slope and which is y-intercept. So this one, here's our B. That's our starting point. That's our y-intercept. I put a big blue dot on 5. So that's our y-intercept. Our slope is negative 2 over 1, remember, which means I've got a rise of negative 2 and a run of 1. So from that big blue dot that I graphed on there, I'm going to go down 2, 1, 2, and forward 1. And I can do that as many times as I want. Down 2, forward 1. Keep going for as long as you like and draw your line. And there we go. And now since I'm going to put more lines on this graph, I'm going to label this one line A, or you can label it with the equation uh, y equals 5 minus 2x. But I'm going to put more graphs on here, so i got to have a way of differentiating between them. So now let's do B. B is interesting because of this 2.5. That's my slope, 2.5. Uh, and it's easiest to use slope if it is in a, a fraction and in an improper fraction. So I'm going to change 2 and a half into 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5 halves. So now my slope is 5 halves, which gives me a rise of 5 and a run of 2, which isn't too tough. Now my starting point right here is the y-intercept. So I'm going to put a big green dot on negative 3 on the y-axis. And from that point, I am going to rise 5 and run 2. So I'm going to go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, forward 2, put a dot. Up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, forward 2, 1, 2. And I think that's as far as I want to go, so I will draw my line. Okay, now, moving right along. The next one, what's interesting about that one? Uh, I th think this is the interesting part. We got a y-intercept that's not so nice. Um, our y-intercept is 3 and a half, and our slope is 3 over 4. Now, the 3 quarters is not a big deal. That's a rise of 3 and a run of 4. But 3 and a half is not on a line. So we got to be careful with that. That's our y-intercept. And so let's see about graphing that one. Um, I'm going to go put a big red dot on 3 and a half, which is right there, right in between 3 and 4. And now I'm going to rise 3 and run 4. But you got to be careful when you're rising because one rise goes right in between the next one. So if I'm going to rise three, I got to go one, two, three, and then run four. One, two, three, four. That puts my next dot right there. And then I can do it again. One, two, three, and run four. One, two, 
three, four, but we're not actually on the points. Now, this line is not as accurate as if we were right on the points because we're just sort of estimating halfway between the two, but it's actually good enough. So I'm going to draw my line. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. So it's not a very nice one because it's in between the points, but we can still get a good estimate. Now, we're going to take a look at an example problem. Example three, the yearbook costs $5,000 up front for setup and consultation fees. It costs $10 on top of that to print each book. Make a table to model the cost of a yearbook for up to 400 ordered books and graph it. What is the slope? What is the y-intercept? Well, the first thing that hits me when I take a look at this question is that I don't think I need this whole graph. Uh, I think I only need the top quarter. So I'm going to move my axes so that they're not in the middle anymore because I only need the positive one. I can't have negative money. I can't have negative number of yearbooks ordered. Um, so now I just have to decide what's going to go on my graph. Does cost, remember, y depends on x. So does cost depend on the number of books ordered? Or is it the other way around? Does the number of books ordered depend on the cost? Well, I think cost is going to depend on the number of books ordered. That makes more sense to me. So I've got cost and number of books down here. I don't need the X and the Y because this is a problem. So we put the more meaningful things on there. So I've got the cost side and I've got the number of books ordered. Now it asks me to do it for up to 400 books and I'm not going to do it for every book. So this is the number of books and this is the cost and I think it would be easiest if I went up by 100s because I don't need that many to graph this line. So I'm going to start at zero books. If we don't order any books we've still got that $5,000 setup fee. So with that $5,000 setup fee even if I change my mind and I don't order a book, I still need to pay that $5,000 setup fee. And then I'm going to say, well, 100, 200, 300, and 400 books. Well, since each book costs $10, uh, 100 books is going to cost me 1000 So this needs to go up by 1000 every time. So that needs to be 6,000. If I add on another 100 books, and remember where I'm getting this from is for every 100 books, each book costs $10. So for 100 books, it costs me an additional $1,000. So it's going to go up by 1,000 every time. So we got 7,000, 8,000, and 9,000. Now I need to pick a suitable scale on here. The costs are in thousands and I need to get from zero to 9,000 and number of books I need to get to 400. So I'm gonna put on a scale here. Okay, so there's the scale I've chose. So for zero books, it's at $5,000, which would be right here. And we don't need to plot all of those on there. I can go to 400 books and put the 9,000 one on, which would be right there, and draw my line. And there we go. Now this asks, what's the slope and what's the y-intercept? Well, if I take a look at the table, I can get the slope pretty easily. Um, the slope equals the change in y over the change in x which is 1,000 over 100, or 10. So there's our slope. And I could have got that off the graph too, but I chose to do it off the table. Both of them are the same thing. And what is the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is right here at $5,000. And I just want you to notice when we're talking about slope and y-intercept, we've seen those before. If you took a look up in there, the $5,000 was the initial cost and the $10 was the rate of change or the value, our unit rate. So this, our slope represents 
unit rate and our y-intercept is initial value. And if you remember from wave back, that means that since there is an initial value, this is called partial variation, which means that when we get an equation, and we can get an equation off of this, y equals m x plus b, there's an initial value that means that this is a partial variation. And we can give it some more meaningful variables. Cost equals 10 times the number of books ordered plus that $5,000 initial value. And that's it for this lesson.